Hey there, VCHHD students. My name is Andy. I'm a VC Health and Human Development teacher. This short video, we're going to look at the Australian Dietary Guidelines, and this is relevant to Unit 3, Area of Study 2 for the 2025 plus HHD study design. If you don't already, there's lots of ways you can engage with the Health Resources Hub. If you're on YouTube at the moment, you can subscribe with the button in the bottom corner of the video there to our YouTube channel. That means you'll get alerts to all of our new videos as they come out across the year. We've also got our website, thehih.net.au. There's opportunities for students and teachers of HHD, and that's being updated regularly, so please check that out. Got our Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook pages where you can follow us and get alerts to our new videos and other opportunities, as well as SAC and exam tips and advice. And also our email info at thehrh.net.au where you can get in touch if you've got any questions. Okay, so what part of the Unit 3 course does this video relate to? So you can see there the area study to key knowledge and key skills. So the key knowledge is relevant to initiatives to promote healthy eating in Australia, including Australian Dietary Guidelines. That's obviously what we're focusing on today. And the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Guide to Healthy Eating. And so we'll be looking at those in a subsequent video. So please check that out. Unit 3 key skills is evaluate the impact of initiatives to promote healthy eating in Australia and their ability to improve health outcomes. Now, obviously, health outcomes relates to health and well-being dimensions and health status indicators, so you have to be able to think about these initiatives and how they might link into those. But also, you might be given some information or some data regarding healthy eating in Australia, and then you might be asked to link these initiatives, okay, to that data or that information and how they could have an impact on those and evaluate whether or not they might be already, okay, being effective in relation to those. So we'll look at a sample question and sample answer coming up in relation to that key skill. So first of all, what are the Australian Dietary Guidelines? So you can see there that it mentions that there are current recommendations on the types and quantities of foods Australians should consume to maintain optimal health and well-being. Now, this essentially document that contains the Dietary Guidelines is a federal government initiative. And so these guidelines are based on scientific evidence derived from high quality research. So it's essentially the government putting information out there, okay, about food consumption and what their sort of recommendations are for Australians to maintain optimal health and well-being. You can see it mentions that they apply to all healthy Australians, including those with common health conditions such as being overweight, but they don't cater for individuals that might require specific dietary advice due to some specific medical condition. So it also provides some information there about, I guess, what the um, guidelines provide detailed advice on. So it says their food types, food groups, and recommended dietary patterns. So not only to promote overall health and well-being, but to minimize the risk of diet-related issues and conditions. And it gives you some examples there, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, obesity, and also to reduce the likelihood of chronic diseases. So type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and certain cancers. So that's essentially what the guidelines are trying to achieve and provide this information for, for Australians to improve their overall health and well-being. So in relation to what you specifically need to know, there are five guidelines and each of the guidelines are considered to be equally important in relation to health outcomes in Australia. But there is quite a bit of detail related to each guideline. And so you can see here on the next couple of slides, I've kind of listed the guidelines and bolded what I think is the information that you need to be able to remember specifically, because if there's a question that asks about the Australian Dietary Guidelines, you're generally being asked to refer to one or more specific guidelines in your answer. And to demonstrate that you know those guidelines well, you should be able, I think, to essentially list okay, that key guideline that you're referring to. So for guideline one, you can see I've bolded there to achieve and maintain a healthy weight, be physically active and choose amounts of nutritious foods and drinks to meet your energy needs. So you can see that that guideline is really focusing on a healthy body weight and giving Australians the advice that they need to be physically active and choose amounts of nutritious food and drink to meet their energy needs. So not consuming too much food and drink, okay, that you're not going to expend that sort of energy that's related to that amount of food and drink on a daily basis because that then obviously will help you to maintain a healthy body weight. And so that's what the first guideline is really um, related to. And so as I was saying previously, you should be able to link this to promoting health and well-being as well as health status indicators. Guideline two is asking you to enjoy a wide variety of food, okay, nutritious food from five food groups every day and drink plenty of water. And then it names the five different food groups. And so what I'd encourage you to do is to go through each of those food groups and know some examples of different nutrients
nutrients, okay, that are part of those different food groups. Because what you can then do if a question is asking you how the dietary guidelines could help perhaps to address levels of cardiovascular disease in Australia is you could choose guideline two, okay, and then talk about a specific food group and a nutrient in that food group. So you can talk about perhaps plenty of vegetables and vegetables are often high in fiber and then how fiber can help to reduce the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. So there's ways that these particular guidelines can be used to link into specific health conditions and show your sort of knowledge of nutrition when it comes to answering questions that are linked to them. Guideline three, limit intake of foods containing saturated fat, added salt, added sugars, and alcohol. Now, there's obviously specific nutrients that are mentioned, okay, as well as alcohol in this particular guideline here. And so you could think about a range of health conditions also that you could choose, okay, to link to this particular guideline. If the question is asking you once again how the dietary guidelines could address cardiovascular disease, you could choose this guideline here. You could quote the guideline and then say if Australians follow this and they limit the intake of foods containing added salt, reduces the risk of increasing their blood pressure, okay, reducing the risk of hypertension, and that helps to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. So practicing linking each of these different guidelines, different health conditions, okay, and then obviously onto health and well-being and health status indicators is what I'd sort of recommend as preparation for your assessments. Guideline four and five, you can see there, encourage, support, and promote breastfeeding for guideline four and care for your food, prepare and store it safely for guideline five. They're not as often, I would say, um, the best choices when it comes to questions in HHD because often the questions are linking into different sort of um, foods, okay? Um, whereas this is more to do with breastfeeding, obviously, for guideline four, which obviously for an infant is helping to boost their immune system. You can develop a relationship between the mother and the child via breastfeeding and strengthen that. But not, of this, not a lot of this is sort of linking into specific health conditions like cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, et cetera, in an explicit way. And so they're not necessarily guideline four and five, I would say the best choice when it comes to answering questions in health. Normally there's a lot more sort of flexibility and options via choosing guideline one, two or three, but that's not to say you can't use these if they seem appropriate for a particular answer because they are part of the dietary guidelines. Guideline five, they care for your food, prepare and store it safely is more closely related to things like food poisoning and making sure if you're caring for your food, preparing and store it safely, reducing that risk of things like bacteria developing in food and developing things like food poisoning. Okay, so let's have a look at a sample question and sample answer. So you could get a question that asks you to describe how the Australian dietary guidelines could assist in reducing levels of overweight and obesity in Australia, and it could be worth three marks. So the first thing I'd always do when a question is asking about the dietary guidelines is choose a specific guideline to focus on and then essentially outline the guidelines. So you can see there in the sample answer, guideline two states to enjoy a wide variety of food from the five food groups every day, drink plenty of water. So the first thing I would make clear is what guideline you're focusing on. Then you have to show an understanding of that guideline. So you can see there, then it says, if people follow this guideline, they're likely to be eating food from the grain food group daily, which contains foods high in fiber. So you're showing that you know one of those five food groups of so guideline two is that grain food group, foods high in fiber. Then you can link fiber in this question here to the health condition of weight and obesity. So fiber can help people to feel full and prevent them from overeating other energy and foods helping to maintain a healthy body weight and assisting reducing levels of overweight and obesity in Australia. So you can see there how you can take a guideline, show an understanding of that guideline, and then link it into a particular health condition to answer a question like this. Also, if you had a question about health and well-being or health status, you could obviously do something similar and then make it relevant to a dimension of health and well-being or a health status indicator. So as I said, I'd go through and practice for all of the different guidelines that were mentioned, how you can link them into different health conditions, linking them into then health and well-being and health status indicators and that should hopefully set you up for success when it comes to looking at the Australian Dietary Guidelines. Okay hopefully you found this video useful just a reminder if you are looking for extra practice questions to do with things like the guidelines also other areas of the course and lead up to the exam at the end of the year I've worked on this revision questions book with health which is uh, with ACED for Health, which has got over 500 marks worth of practice questions, including a full chapter on extended response questions, which will help you in your SACs if you've got an extended response question in your Unit 3 and Unit 4 SACs, and also obviously the end of your exam where there's Section B with extended response question. And it's also got in this particular book here, a full trial exam and all of the questions in it has sample answers as well. So you can head to book.acedvc.com to order a copy of that and it'll come in the post. Okay, thanks so much.